Today, ABC Sports is in Big Orange Country, the UCLA Bruins out of the Pac-10 Conference, and the Tennessee Volunteers of the Southeastern Conference. Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, a citadel of college football in the South. Second only to Michigan in size, more than 91,000 seats on campus. UCLA snapped BYU's 25-game win streak last week. This is Tennessee's opener. They've met seven times since the 60s, all even. Three, three, and one. It should be fun. Here in Knoxville, Tennessee, we're waiting for the UCLA Bruins and Tennessee Volunteers to get underway. UCLA opened its season last week at Provo against Brigham Young. Snap BYU's 25-game winning streak, 27-24. Coach Terry Donahue went with quarterback Dave Norrie in the first half, switched over to Matt Stevens to start the second half, and it worked out. Stevens is a junior who had three starts last year. There is no indecision as to which man starts at quarterback for Tennessee. Tony Robinson was there last year. He's back as a senior, and he's a dandy. 6'3", long-legged loper. He was good for about 2,000 yards last year, hitting about 62% of his passes. The principal target for Robinson last year was Tim McGee, who had 54 receptions. But all the Tennessee receivers can run swiftly including a sprinter named Sam Grady, who took a silver medal in the 100 meters at the Olympic Games. Robinson is a pretty good scrambler. He's got a rifle for an arm. And about Tony Robinson, the quarterback, Tennessee coach John Major says this. Tony Robinson has the most uh, natural ability of any young man I've been around, in my opinion. He has the greatest arm I've ever seen uh, from the first day he stepped in the practice field. His deep, uh, his touch on the deep pass is, uh, is, uh, is excellent. Uh, I don't think anybody can throw the deep pattern on the takeoff or the post uh, like he can do it. He also has a good touch in the short game. He can run when he has the opportunity. He covers a lot of ground with those long strides of his. If the UCLA Bruins win this game, Terry Donahue will become the winningest coach ever at UCLA, passing Bill Spaulding's mark of 72 wins. Terry took the job, succeeding Dick Vermeil at the... I think we have good enough skill to have some success. Johnny Majors, like Terry Donahue, is coaching where he played. Johnny, after success at uh, Iowa State in Pittsburgh, came back to Tennessee in 1977. Earlier this month, it was announced that Doug Dickey would succeed Bob Woodruff as athletic director, and yesterday, I asked John Majors if he had wanted the AD's job at Tennessee. Uh, yes, I did. I feel like there's advantages in having a dual jobs, uh, but the president and administration did not want to make the, uh, the jobs uh, the same. Uh, if they were straight with me, which I anticipate they were, they told me a couple years ago I could have my choice. Well, I choose to coach football because I like it. I feel like I can coach several more years. I love it, in fact. Between the two, I'd rather coach football at the present time. I think since I didn't get the job, I think there's advantages in having dual jobs. Since I didn't get it, that's not my decision. I think they've chosen a very good man in Doug Dickey. Doug coached here. He played for Bob Woodruff. I've worked for Bob Woodruff. We come from some of the same type background. And I think Doug will be a very positive influence at the University of Tennessee. I see no reason why we can't get along well together. I think he'll help us continue to move forward in the right direction. It's glorious weather at the southern end of the Smokies with two quality teams ready to play college football, UCLA and Tennessee. The UCLA Bruins of the Pac-10 Conference and the Tennessee Volunteers of the Southeastern Conference and John Lee, UCLA's place kicker, points in his last four games. Tennessee's offense keyed by quarterback Tony Robinson and wide receiver Tim McGee, connecting for half a hundred passes and catches last season in a 7-4 and one year. They are dangerous. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Nissan, builders of technologically advanced cars and trucks for over 50 years. For drivers who demand quality, the name is Nissan. By Owens Corning, our building products put your house in the pink. By Prestone 2 Antifreeze, America goes with Prestone. And by Fram Transmission Filters. If you take care of your car right, Fram is the right transmission filter. Neyland Stadium in Knoxville with some 90,000 people ready to roar this afternoon. It obviously will be a partisan crowd. Here come the UCLA Bruins. They're 1 0, beat BYU in their opener. 27 24, ranked eighth this week in the coaches poll. Terry Donahue, coach, 10th season, 72 29 and 5. 
University of California, Los Angeles. Here's the ball. Opening game for the Volunteers, unranked in preseason polls, John Major's ninth season at Tennessee, 51, 39, and 3. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, along with Frank Royals, our analyst and coach. UCLA has played a game. Tennessee has not played a game. We had the same circumstance last week between Florida State and Nebraska, and the team that had played won. Well, <clears throat> UCLA coaches couldn't have written a better script for the game. They have so many benefits from that ball game, namely the fact that they came from behind late in the ball game in the fourth quarter. Also, they proved themselves that they could win, Keith, on the road against a hostile crowd. And here they are this week, back in a hostile crowd and the other dog again. You can tell his voice is a little cranky this week. We'll give him a shot of grease and keep him going through the day. But let's talk about uh, team defense now. Tennessee, not a whole lot of proven talent yet defensively, yet they have a new coordinator in Ken Donahue. It would seem to me that Tennessee defense is going to have to fly all over the field and take some chances. Well, Ken Donahue had great success with an aggressive defense at Alabama, and Johnny Majors brought him back to stabilize and strengthen the Tennessee defense. He's going to have a hard time today. It's going to be match he's going to be matching with with one of the great offensive coaches in America, at, at Homer Smith, but he's got to guess right, confuse the, the uh, UCLA defense if they're going to stop him. Well, if they don't stop him, uh, UCLA will sit on that football and, and probably hold it 40 minutes, if not more. <laughs> I hate to say this, but the only way maybe Tennessee could win if that's the case is they kick, they score a touchdown and leave a great field goal kicker just gets the field goal for UCLA. Two weeks in a row in front of a hostile crowd uh, it would seem to me that's a considerable challenge. It is, Keith, and it's something that a team doesn't look forward to, but UCLA has a history of going on the road and winning some big ball games, and they have that tradition, Keith, of winning. They've won three big bowl games, two Rose Bowl games, They've beaten Southern Cal four out of the last five games. So they know how to win the big ball game. I'm not sure Tennessee does. Okay. We're going to find out in just a minute. Should be a lot of fun. Normally, these two teams put on quite a show. We think they will again. We'll have it for you in a moment. More than 90,000 fans packed in Neyland Stadium here in Knoxville, Tennessee for this game against UCLA today. And one of the things that visiting coaches have to prepare for is the noise factor. But UCLA and Coach Terry Donahue have been prepared. They came in and all week they practiced going without a cadence and they have gone with a nonverbal uh, audible. They will just hold up a, a number, a hand. They will signal their wide receiver so they are ready. The noise should not be a factor. They are prepared. Let's go back upstairs for the kickoff. Keith. All right, Timmy, thank you very much. UCLA will be sending Bob Garibaldi, if that's a familiar name, this is the son. Daddy was the pitcher with the Giants. Gaston Green, so they've got frontline people returning the kicks. Gaston Green is the starting tailback, and Carlos Rivez, the younger brother of Fuad Rivez, will be kicking for Tennessee. Transfer to UT Knoxville from UT Chattanooga. And the game is on. The eighth meeting, and the ball is way back and out of the end zone, and there'll be no return. And the UCLA Bruins will open this way. Matt Stevens at quarterback, 6 1, 190. To the ball. Over the ball at center, Joe Goebel. And young Matt Stevens gets the call this week to start the ball game in place of David Norrie, who started last week. Stevens turns, takes the ball to the tailback, keeps it, looks down the middle, throws to his tight end, Derek Tunnell. And Tunnell pulls it down at about the 28 yard line. Tunnell is 6'5", 235, the man who just put two for the UCLA Bruins as they throw on first down. And not many people expected that. Stevens gives to Green. Green caught in the backfield. Great diving tackle by number 59, Mark Kovanek. And here's the defensive alignment by Tennessee. Three-man front. Robbie Scott, Fred Bennett, and Mark Kovanek. The backers are Ty Robinson, Kelly Zager, Darren Miller, Dale Jones. The secondary is Terry McDaniel, Tommy Sims, Chris White, and Vic Peppers, and they've got some people hurt who will be playing later in the season. It is third down and uh, about three now for UCLA, a loss of the yard on the last play, and it's 
It's a double tight end alignment for the Bruins. Tennessee stacks inside. Green slants off tackle, breaks into the clear, and he is long gone TD UCLA. They caught Tennessee stunning in the middle. They split him outside. Gaston Green has great speed, and he flew 72 yards, and UCLA is on the board, and that will have some impact on the noise of 91,000 people. He certainly improved his stats so far. This is a kickoff. Jim Bray kicked seven times last week. None were returned, but his first one today will be. It is Pete Manuska who brings the football back to about the 19-yard line. And Tennessee will open this way with Tony Robinson, 6'3", 185, a senior. Over 2,000 yards a year ago, Charles Wilson, a 205-pound sophomore, is the tailback. And Big Sam Henderson, 250-pound fullback. The wide people, Tim McGee, the leading receiver, 5'10", 180. Eric Swanson, 5'11", and 185, the split in. But we'll see a variety of wide receiver people today, including, as I said a few minutes ago in the pregame program, Sam Grady, the silver medalist at 100 meters in the Olympic Games. All right, Robinson back, and he's going to throw on the first play of the ball game, and he's got a man wide open. It is Tim McGee, first down, Tennessee at the 49. What a great execution on the first play. McGee's going in motion. <clears throat> He's going to go down, and then he breaks to the outside in behind the front cover. He's wide open. Robinson lays the ball out there perfectly. A beautiful catch by McGee, who had 54 receptions last year. Johnny Major says, Keith, he's the best receiver they've had at Tennessee. That's big words. The ball is just short of midfield with Panuska lined up at the tailback position instead of Wilson. They send McGee in motion and give the ball to the up man, the big back, 250-pounder. And Sam Henderson from South Bend, Indiana. Hammers in there for about five. Jeff Smith tied in. 6'3", 235. David Douglas, 265 at tackle. Galbraith weighs 260 at guard. The center is 255. Kirk. Uh, John Bruin, 275 at guard. Bruce Wilkinson, 260 at tackle. And uh, there are no, there's only one senior along that offensive front amongst the uh, big guys from tackle to tackle. Charles Wilson now is back in at tailback for Tennessee on second down and five. Robinson, little quick pop. They've got him set up on a screen over there. It is Joey Clinkscale. And Clinkscale gets the Tennessee first down and snaps the ball in frustration. He thought he could have gone all the way. They'll put him down at the 24-yard line. This is something Tennessee likes to use, a flank or screen. Fake away from the top of your screen. Get the defense moving this way, then throw the ball right out on the line of scrimmage, picking up the block from the lineman. A good wall of blockers, and number 87, Clinkscale, is mad because he tripped. Volunteers trying to answer UCLA's opening first. Bruins out on top 7-0 with a 72-yard run by Gaston Green. First down, Tennessee, UCLA 24. And here goes Wilson, the tailback. And he slashes over the right side and picks up nine yards, and the ball's rolling around loose. And UCLA's got it. So Wilson, a big hole over the right side. But he was hit late. The ball came loose and looked like Mark Whalen covered it. Often, when a ball carrier is fighting for extra yardage, the ball pops out. You can see that Wilson puts his hand over the ground. And with Tennessee turning it over at, their, at uh, UCLA's 15. Bruins will take it there and go the other way. They scored quickly the first time they had it. Stevens fakes the ball to the tailback. Goes deep down the middle for Sherrard. It is incomplete. Double coverage. And the Bruins are lucky to get that one back. As we can see, Sherrod, number 82, is going to go deep inside. The quarterback was trying to look number seven, the safety man, away from the play. But White, a senior, was not to be denied. He came across and made the play along with the right halfback. Davis, the starting uh, free safety, is injured. White is playing for really the first time. The only time he's played is on special teams. So Homer Smith has planted that seed in the mind of the Tennessee defenders now. And Stevens gives the ball. Green and green is fall down. As
as he tries to cut back against the grain and they get him at about the 18 yard line Terry 73 win they're down at about seven Tennessee defenders jumping around Stevens back to throw looks and goes on the ground pass intended for Sherrard he was getting some pressure and when he let it go he had to hurry the throw and it was incomplete Temple gets now to within two of Penn State on a safety now the Bruins will kick and uh, Ted Henderson a red shirt senior from Albuquerque had a very good ball game last week in the mountain air of the Wasatch Mountains of Utah averaging over 42 yards per kick the deep man is Tim McGee for Tennessee Tim McGee's a flower balls go after him he gets the kick away ball hangs and McGee comes up from the fair catch and receives the ball just inside the UCLA 48 yard line so the volunteers get it back in field position his coaches completion percentage mark last year in his junior year now he's got some field position to start from UCLA is close to the 47 they seem to be on their way a while ago in the first possession until Wilson fumbled the ball they threw on first down in the first snap and they run it this time Go right back to Wilson to give him a little confidence and he's going to pick up three four yards on the carry Terry Taylor second leading tackler number 42 for UCLA plays that middle linebacker position mostly all he has to do is watch the tailback and try to move over and whip the blocker on this one makes an outstanding play and get some help from Chucky Miller number 37 he's from Chattanooga Chattanooga Tennessee who went west and uh, he says sometimes he goes home to Chattanooga and he thinks people work hard at ignoring him but he's a good football player. He's a very good football player, Keith. Second down and six, and uh, Robinson back to throw. Has all day, and he throws the ball wide of his mark. Wilson, the tailback, coming out of the backfield. Keith, he led the team in tackles from his safety position. It is third and six now for Tennessee. Ball on the UCLA 44. Stop! Stop! <laughs> Robinson kept it on an option, and... Good defensive play as he is stopped by Eric Smith for a little gain. Now let's join Jim Lampley. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have to go home to bed early tonight. Well, here is Bob Garman now. <laughs> he spins it up into the air, and it's a tail dragger and kicked right on into the end zone, and so the ball will come back out to about to the 20-yard line. It's a 43-yard punt. Maryland came on late. Marcus Greenwood is in at fullback now, replacing Mel Farr. He had a big game at BYU. Picked up more than 70 yards. They go back to the tailback, Green. And Green is nailed down after a one-yard pickup at the 21-yard line. We've got 9.15 to play in the first quarter. And the Bruins leading 7-0 over Tennessee. Michigan State, don't score so many. Save them. You're going to need them down the way. And he was right, too. He scored 60 points in one game and seven the second game. Don't let him think scoring is easy. That's right. Don't let him think he can get scores any time he wants to. They're hard to come by in a tough game. Second down and nine. Matt Stevens back to throw. Goes to the man out of the backfield. That's the fullback, Marcus Greenwood. And Greenwood takes the lick right at the marker. He's close to the first down. Probably going to be the quarterback of UCLA. He is quick. He reads quickly, and he makes quick decisions. Perfect. Team best. Quarterback sneak diving for the first down, and they're going to give it to him just over the 30. Tennessee hurrying to get a new defender into the ball game, and will probably change the defense a little bit as UCLA comes up now on first down, just over the 30-yard line, leading seven to nothing in the first quarter. And Stevens still got it, rolls it out now, and whips it to the sidelines. And the pass is complete to Carl Durrell, six-footer, 190. He was on the sidelines and going right on out of bounds. He had no place to go. But again, you see the quick release and strong arm of Stevens. LA picked eight of on that last play. Tailback, green, outside he goes. And gets the first down. Oh, boy. boy he, you're not going to arm tackle him, I'll tell you right now. And he ran right through two arms on that play. That's cool. One of them, of course, a 72-yard sprint for a touchdown. First down, Bruins. Ball just over the 45. Going on first down. 
Down the line comes Stevens, pitches the ball back to Green. Green drops it, scramble for it. Tennessee looks like they've got it. They do. Number 96. Fundamental. Tyrone Robinson comes out of with it. Fundamental mistake on Green's part. The lateral was being pitched to him, and he looked at the defense, took his eyes off the ball, fumbled it, Tennessee got it back, and a break for them. 7.03 to go in the first quarter. UCLA has now turned it over, and Tennessee has the ball. First down at the Bruins, 45. 7-0. Owens lead. Robinson, the quarterback. Howard in his fullback. Another big 225. Spread them out, move them around. That's what they're trying to do to UCLA and give the ball to Howard coming off injury. His first action, really, of the fall. Again, let's go to Jim. Up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, Keith, the. Sounds exciting. Keith, look how wide the receivers are. You can see how Tennessee spreads the defense. Sideline to sideline. Back goes Robinson to throw. Swings it out. Wilson's got it. Slips and falls at the 40. He had his first down, I think, or close to it, but he lost his footing when he tried to make the cut on the inside. Well, look at here. West. Steve Sloan says he's got a much better team this year. It's going to be tougher at Duke. And there's your final score with Michigan State winning and Air Force and Wyoming now. The Wyoming wishbone getting the lead there. Delaware is leading Navy. And old Tubby got the Tubby Raymond. Mud hens working here. What do they call them? Uh, mud hens and mud hens. That's yeah. correct. Robinson gives the ball to Wilson. The tailback that he squirts through there. They'll need one more yard for the first down. They were at third and five. Now they're looking at fourth and one. And all the players are saying, let's go for it. All the stands are yelling, let's go for it. But be careful, Majors. I'm telling you, you don't make it. You're the bum. But I believe they're going to go for yeah, it. Yeah, he's sending Henderson, number 43, the 250-pound fullback, comes into the ball game, and they're going to go on fourth down. And you know what? It's a, at least it's a good yard and a half. At least. You're right. A good yard and a half. They line up tight inside to set up a power hour situation. And give it to the big man, the fullback, and he did not make it. Sam Henderson did not make the first down. Nowhere near run close, Chief. UCLA got right under the box. The key to stopping short yards, see if we can tell the defensive lineman, getting underneath. The key man is over to the left. Fatchkoff gets the penetration. Then 41 Miller comes in, fills the hole right there. Beautiful. Be three games in a row on the road for him. Yep. This is Ball, and Ball just accepts the ball and goes straight ahead and gets to midfield as we again go to Jim. Down eight, seven and a half, if you like, from midfield for UCLA. Stevens to throw. Whips it over to the number 81, Tunnell, making his second catch of the ball game. The tight end drifting to the sidelines, and he makes the catch down at the Tennessee 41. In a row, he's five out of seven for 45 yards. The scoring first was a 72-yard run by Gaston Green. 7 nothing UCLA, and they're now beginning to mount another threat. As Stevens rolls it out, throws to the sidelines. The pass is caught by Mike Sherrard. He's thrown out of bounds. They've got another first down at the Tennessee 26-yard line. Back down. Ball down at the 26. The crowd trying to get into the act a little bit. Make some noise for Stevens and company. Give it a ball. Ball goes over. Ball rolling around. Did it get out of bounds? I think it went out of bounds. Yeah. A couple of you. orange shirts over there, but they couldn't get a handle on it. Ball number 21 is going to get a try and run over his own blocker far, and the ball just pops out. The last, if the offensive team has possession of the ball, and it's not, doesn't make a difference who touches it. And the Bruins now call a timeout. The loss on the play takes them back to the 28-yard line. They'll be looking at second down and 12 with three minutes and 16 seconds to play in the first quarter, leading 7-0. But when you get this close to the goal line, uh, anywhere inside of a 50-yard field goal, 
and perhaps even beyond it, they become still a scoring possibility with, with John Lee standing over there. On his back in at tailback. Here's the blitz. And Stevens throws it away. That could get you a flag, couldn't it? Yes, it could. The official did not call it. Very questionable. There was not a white shirt within 18 yards of the ball. Blitz again, Keith. Went to a long count. They pick him up pretty well. Stevens now can't find anybody. Pulls it down and picks off. And is ridden out of bounds about the 22. And so the Tennessee defense stands up pretty well under that pressure as Dale Jones made the stop. And here comes Mr. Lee. What a story Mr. Lee is too, Keith. Unbelievable accuracy. Something like 81% for his career. Well, inside 40. He is 42 out of 43. The T is put down at the 29, so he's inside 40. 39-yard try. The holder is David Clinton. The snapper is Terry Theodore. Theodore has snapped the ball on every one of his kicks during Lee's career, and it's plenty of leg, and it's down the pipe. I mean, he just nailed it right down the middle. <laughs> John doesn't worry a whole lot about uh, the wind and Kentucky windage and all those kind of things. He says, I just hit it as hard as I can right down the middle. And most of the time, the ball has perfect end over end action. He is quite remarkable. He's so he has given UCLA a 10 0 lead. He said, He said, Hits this one a little harder and hooks it toward the corner of the end zone and there will be no return on this one as Benusco watched it. He, I think Pete probably thought it was going to go out of bounds but it held the line and it'll come back to the 20. He kicked that into the wind. When he gets it with the wind I don't believe that Tennessee will have a chance to return. It's a big advantage to have a place kicker that after you score kicks the ball over the goal What line. do you think about uh, some people are talking about putting the ball on the 35. I don't know why we don't keep. I've advocated that for years and years and years and for some reason we're reluctant to do it. I think we don't want to copy the pros. But we should do it in my judgment. I think we will. From the 20 here come the volunteers down 10 nothing with Howard and Wilson lined up and Robinson to throw. There's some of his quickness and agility. His pass is away now, and the pass is complete. And it's good up to the 34-yard line. Jeff Smith, the tight end, showed you some moves right there. Well, Jeff Smith caught 26 passes last year. He's vital, key, important in this passing game of Tennessee. But this is what Robinson does so well. He's quick, can run. Throw on the run, find the receipt. This is took a perfect throw, Keith. Mm -hmm. I mean, a perfect throw for the reception. Smith pulls it in. 14 yard pickup, first down balls. They're on 34. <laughs> Robinson looking to throw again. Going beat. Pass intended for McGee, defended by Chucky Miller. Heck of a play by Miller. Miller is 5'9", and McGee 5'10", so their size was relative. Well, McGee runs faster than, uh, than a 4'4 in the 40, but it's perfectly played by 37 Miller. Running step to step with him. Now they look up for the ball together, and it's important is who gets the leap, who can jump the highs. Miller adjusts into the ball and gets his hands up. Let's see. Just enough. And just enough to deflect it out of the reach of McGee. And it's second down and ten. That was a good example of Robinson's strong arm. Key. Pretty good foot race, wasn't it? It was. Going to throw again. Now he starts rolling around, pulls it down, and gets it up to the 39 yard line. Boy, he's dangerous, Keith. When he gets that ball and you scramble out of it, you have a distorted coverage in your secondary. It's key to really stay in your position for the defense when he starts scrambling or somebody be open for a touchdown. Here comes the dime backfield, defensive backfield for the UCLA Bruins. Get a number so far. Yes. 
with six defensive backs. Four, ball. four rushes, one linebacker. Ball on the 39. It is third down and five. Tennessee continues to assault with formations. Well, it looked like they had in mind uh, trying to split them up the middle. And William Howard ran into Terry Toomey, and Toomey just was staying at home, and nobody moved him around, and he made the stop. That situation is when you outcoach yourself. Let the quarterback use the audible. And uh, he had a pass called. He saw a certain defense. He tried to change off to the run, and it didn't work. Garmin in the punt. First one today was good for 43. He's got a little help with the wind. Get some spin on it. Comes drifting back to Zippert Urban. And a penalty flag is down as Urban goes down at the 19. Crowd getting into it. Ball goes to Gaston Green. Good run by Green up to close to the 17 yard line. So that's about eight for him. Four in the game, 12 runs, nine passes. Double tight end, second down, two. That's impressive, Keith, the balance between running and passing. Tailback's got it. Green's got the first down. As he changes directions twice on that short run, Gerard and McGee. They are balanced across there with talent, skill people, both teams. First down and 10 from the 22. <laughs> Whistle stops them. And the quarter is over. Well, the clock ran out apparently just as the ball was snapped, and so they stopped the play. And after 15 minutes in Knoxville, it's 10 0 UCLA, and the Bruins are trying to take control of the ball game. For Dillon Stadium, Knoxville. 90,000 folks in attendance. We've got over 91,000 seats. It looks full. And there are the stats for the first quarter. The Bruins slowly but surely taking control of this ball game. It is first down. At the 22, Stevens pitches to Green. Gaston Green is tripped up and goes out to about the 26. That'll be a four-yard pickup. Second and six. Pullback on his way. Mel Farr rambles all the way to the 43-yard line before Terry McDaniel brings him down. McCullough, the right guard, and the center, Goble, make good blocks. Farm just has a gaping hole, has nowhere to go but right down the middle, north and south. Finally, the safety man brings him down. James Primus is now in a sophomore out of National City, 195, 90 pounds, the tailback. Another very promising youngster. And uh, Stevens makes it to him and is sacked, and the ball rolls loose, and the Tennessee man covers it, but they call him down. Back at the 33 34. That time the blitz got home. That's what the Tennessee needs to do is get some penetration on these play action passes. Quarterback has to hold the ball quite a while, and the receivers had not gotten open. You can, I, I believe it was That's a good, good call. call. Good yeah. call. Stevens' knee was down while he had possession of the ball. The play is over, even though he laid a fumble. I think his whole body he, was down. <laughs> all right, let, let's see. No, close, close. The ball no, was no. the ball was kicked out as he was waving it. Tough call against Tennessee. Both Second down. Ball. They've got to go to the Tennessee 47, roughly, to get the first down. This snap is from about the 34. They run a draw. And carrying is Primus, and Primus is maybe 38-yard line. Another look at it. It looks to me like his leg's down. All right, the, it seems to me that the ball hop, put, hops yeah, out. It might have. Yeah, it, it seems like they knocked it out just before his knee touched the ground. Fisher was screened off from it. Fisher is over to the right. He cannot, uh, he cannot see it. it. Number 99, Anthony Howard, I believe, knocks the ball out with his right hand. It is third down, UCLA and 14. Stevens is in the shotgun. Yep, yep. Let's it go, and it is incomplete. The pass receiver, Willie Anderson, turned inside. The ball was thrown outside. And it's 
fourth down, and the Bruins now will punt. Tennessee got some rush on the pass, and that's the key to any pass defense success. Put some pressure, make the quarterback throw earlier than he wants to before your defense is spread thin in the secondary. McKee, the deep man, dangerous with Henderson the punt. His first kick today was good for 30 yards into the wind. Now he's got the wind in his back. Kind of swirls around in this big oval, and he gets a dandy. McGee gets a good block and comes back to the 20. Otherwise, uh, Nick Tim is spread all over the landscape. That was a 44-yard punt and a four-yard return tackle by Marcus Turner. On 20, trailing 10 nothing with 12:14 to go in the first half. Opening game for Tennessee, second game for UCLA. Charles Wilson and Keith Davis line up in the backfield. No real fullback in there right now, and Tony Robinson rolls it out with a guardian. Throws it to the sideline. The pass is caught by Charles Wilson, and Wilson is short of his first down, just over the 28. Again, Jim. 12. 15. Yours, Keith. Now Napoleon got Napoleon McCallum got over 100 in the first half. Robinson rolls out, runs away from the pursuit, gets his pass away, hits him on the numbers. Look out! This is Tim McGee. And he is finally run down on the UCLA 41. What a fantastic play. There's no reason away. It busted in the, in the backfield first. And then you can see Robin, Robinson has that great knack of finding open receiver when he's scrambling. And McGee is exciting. What a great receiver. McGee runs in motion, turns down. And as soon as he sees the scramble by Robinson, go to the open spot. Come on inside. Find the opening right there. Now put on the dance, and there he goes. Two catches for McGee, 61 yards, first down Tennessee, Bruin 41. Howard, the lone back, and now they shuffle things around with Keith Davis going to the tailback slot. And Davis has it. Puts his helmet down and rams against Mark Whalen and gets something out of it. Davis at 190 running into a 250 pounder from Burlingame, California. Tony Robinson over 100 yards in his passing. I don't know if I've seen a quarterback recently that has a. I mean, he threw, he was moving, and he the pass was just letter perfect. And moving to his left, Keith, which you had pointed out, and which is the difficult to throw, moving to your left and throw across your body. Right over the numbers. Second down and seven, and Robinson back to throw. As protection has a man. Short of the first down. Good tackle by Rutledge. Craig Rutledge really laid a hit on Jeff Smith and kept him from picking up the first down. He'll be about a yard short of it. Rutledge, number 30, intercepted the first quarter pass. Brigham Young last week for a touchdown. He had knee sur arthroscopic knee surgery about two and a half weeks ago, too. Here are the numbers Three and a half weeks ago now. Here, that arthroscopic surgery is something else, Keith. This greatest invention of all, as far as athletics is concerned. But Jeff Smith, the tight end, is a key man. Third down and about a yard. Spread all over the field. Last time they went on a short yardage play, they gave it a pullback. This time, they didn't make it again. Charles Wilson, the tailback, took it that time, and they didn't make it as uh, Mark Whalen. Defensive right side tackle just nailed him down. Convert on either third down or fourth down in five tries in the ball game. And they're going to go on fourth and two here. The ball at the UCLA 33. Keith, when you run on fourth and one like they did early and third and two and don't make it, then you usually line up and try some play action pass. They're in a power eye. I think they're going to run on play action pass. That play action pass. Got it. It was Jeff Smith that pulled it down. That's the key. You go with your best horses. Your best player is your quarterback. And the fake in the backfield is really the key that sets it up. 81 just goes to the ground just like he's a blocker. Smith number 81. Now he jumps up. The linebackers have forgotten him. Good play acting. That's the key. You got to <laughs> fool those people sometimes like that. I had one of those or two in my time. <laughs> Chuck doesn't think so, but I did. <laughs> First and ten from the UCLA 27. Davis is the tailback. Howard the fullback. Robinson swings it out to Davis. One hand catch. He got a block. That popped him loose there. Number 75 came across. John Bruin 
and laid the block for him and he made something out of the play when it looked like he was going to take a lick for a loss. Well this Tennessee offense is based a lot on Bill Walsh of San Francisco. Here's the Volunteers possession. Two plays fumble, four plays punt, four plays lost on downs, five plays and a punt and here we are on their fifth possession threatening. Robinson now 9 of 11, 125 yards. Stay with that quarterback. He looks sensational. Second down, six from the 23. Wings it over there in a hurry and uh, gets short yardage out of it. Coming up quickly to make the tackle on Joey Clink scales is Daryl Henley, and the pass is ruled incomplete. I guess he lost it going down. Down at about six now for Tennessee. The blitz scared him out of running. The, the threat of the blitz scared you, uh, Tennessee out of their play. Wilson is back in. He goes in motion. Here's the blitz. And he got it. Number 40, Toomey, coming out of the nose guard position, makes the hit on him. The pass ball. Carlos Rivez is in, and he gets a considerable challenge in his first try as a volunteer. It's a 49-yard try. He got it. How about that? In your first try. So the younger brother comes through from 49 yards. Tennessee's on the board at 10-3. Garibaldi and Green go deep for UCLA as Tennessee scores the 49-yard field goal off the foot of Rivez, and it's a 10-3 ball game, and Carlos will kick off now. Good high kick into the wind. Goal line, green. Out to the 25. Brought down by Darren Miller. Now the old pendulum swings. It looked like UCLA was going to take control of the ball game for a time. The Tennessee defense took some chances, got their back up, made some big plays. And now the offense came in and produced some points. And the defense had some time to rest. It is quite cool today, however. And let's see what the strategy is at this point. Defense jumping around, show a four-man front right now with four backers. They literally are lined up in a 4-4-3. Oldest defensive football, Keith. <laughs> and the ball is given off to the tailback, James Primus. And Primus powers over the left side and Gets up to about the 27. His offensive yard by UCLA, 122 and 60, just the reverse by Tennessee. Tennessee is primarily a passing team. Cannot uh, be a very effective running the ball if UCLA continues to blitz. Second down and eight. to throw. Goes back to the weak side man and the ball is caught at the 31. The crowd hoops. They thought it bounced in there. Ruled good catch again, Jim. They called that an incomplete pass after all, didn't they? Yes, the umpire has that call. The man inside on any pass, whether it's trapped or not, and he ruled it incomplete. So it's third and eight. Here's the pitch. Gets it off and just before the blitz, but he is short of the first down. That's a good defensive play on Carl Durrell. There were two men coming. That's one of the things that we were told about the Tennessee defensive people. They may not have much experience yet, but they can run to the ball. That's a great point. The thing that you do in pass defense, give them the short pass, but don't let them make anything run it after they catch it. And the Durrell caught that ball three yards from the first down. He can make another inch. Not another inch. Two Tennessee men hit him as Keith said. Jim McGee deep. Henderson to punt. High kick. McGee drifts under it. Fair catches it. Foul kick, Keith, because the, the, uh, the covering team cannot run within two yards of the safety man once the ball is on its downward flight it's a five yard penalty Marcus Turner was a man who ran close to him 41 yard punt and looks like they'll mark off five yards against the Bruins 601 to go first half 
The five-yard penalty puts the football out at the 33 for Tennessee, and so Tony Robinson and the company get pretty good field position for this possession. Robinson is out of Tallahassee. Tallahassee? What are you doing, Bobby Tallahassee? <laughs> well, he wanted to play on a team like Tennessee. This a type of, of offense. Yeah. A great great, great history from home. Great I history. said he wanted to go away from home. Robinson quickly delivers the ball. The ball is caught by Kent Scales, and Joey is up for about a five-yard pickup near the 38-yard line. Both teams have seemed to be having some, uh, some success with the blitz because, I think, both offensive lines are inexperienced. Tennessee's going to go without a huddle. They, have planned, they plan to do this some in this ball game. got to cooperate with them a little over well, the, the value of this the defense cannot call sometimes what they want to little sideline pattern again it's good close to the first down good to Eric Swanson where did they put him out at the 44 well, I believe that'll be a first down you, you don't huddle your defense cannot get called all the stunts Keith that they want to the blitzes they have to play pretty much a basic defense. Chains aren't set, though. They can't go to the chains are set. Now they can go. Same stuff. Swanson for the UCLA 49. Robinson is just reading the defensive coverage. UCLA is lining up in a basic defense with a no huddle. He got a bad spot there, Frank. He sure did. Got about a, lost about a yard, yeah, didn't he? Did. Here again, you'll see the audible at the line of scrimmage. Did by Robinson calling play out right and left. That's a change of defense. Fives. You see how late. But he's taking them, taking them out of the blitz. Loops it this time for Swanson and a little bit too long. Swanson had wiggled around and gotten behind Chucky Miller. He lost another half a yard on the spot this time. They've now got the ball all the way back to <laughs> the midfield stripe, but it really ought to be up on the 49. <laughs> They're 0 for 5 on third down conversions. Robinson takes off up the middle. He's got room. He's got a first down. He's out of bounds inside the 40 at the 39. He's six foot three, but at least He's, it looks like five of those six three are, are legs. I mean, he is really a long-legged kid. Keith, he has that quickness, that vision, and he's a great competitor. The coach has told me that when he runs into adversity, it doesn't bother him at all. And as soon as he saw the hole opening up, he just ran for the first down. Quarterback like that, receivers all covered, he makes the first down. That's the reason he was so successful last year. His first year as a starter. Now the blitz. Quarterback's using all of us doing it every time. They hit him, he gets the ball off, and it is incomplete and a great effort on the catch downfield. But Tim McGee couldn't pull it down between James Washington and Daryl Henley. Two pretty good defensive players there. Washington the safety man is going to come over. It looks like he's going to maybe knock the ball loose for McGee. But the play was just perfectly thrown. Robinson knew he was going to take a shot. He stayed in there and threw the ball just perfectly. Could have been completed. Just a great throw, great touch, mm. outstanding touch. Or oh, he's exciting. Robinson is just to make the big play for you, Keith. Second and ten. Dump it off. Wilson's got two men in front of him. Got a first down inside the 20. Penalty flag. Got a face mask, I believe, down around the 15-yard line. What a beautiful call by the Tennessee State. First time they've shown the screen to the back. How do you fight the rush? What do you do when the defensive men are getting pressure? You set up the screen and look at the house. Beautifully it was concealed by the Tennessee team. And finally Washington, who made 119 tackles last year, brings it back. That looks like that was piling on, Keith. Might have been. Didn't take long. The flag came out immediately, and you see there was an official right there, and it's going against the Bruins. That's the distance. Oh, this five yards. Five yards. 
face mask yeah, underneath. Face mask. That's what Defense, it first down. Inadvertent face mask on the tackle. And now Tennessee has the ball. It is just outside the 10. It is not really first and goal. About two inches. Yeah. They could make a first down on the one inch line and have four more downs. This is a tough place to score from a team like Tennessee. The defensive field has shrunk. Very low yardage to cover. Davis and Henderson in the backfield. Robinson checking around here and changing things. And there's a flag there. Somebody moved. There was collision in the trenches. I don't know whether it was Waller, the middle guard. He got an early start. Whether he was started by movement on the Tennessee line. I'll let the men in the striped shirts who get paid for it make that decision. Keith, it looked to me like that the court the center snapped the ball once Waller jumped the neutral zone. That's a smart play by the center, Tennessee hyper. What it appeared to be. Well, that was a big play and a bad, horrible mistake. It took for UCLA to make it this time. Yeah, that was uh, Todd Kirk in That ball foul. Offside defense. First down. Some schools teach their son up. Once the defense jump in the neutral zone, if you snap the ball, you get a five yard penalty. Different critter right now, though. Instead of first and ten plus two inches, it's first and five plus two inches. Changing the play again. Changing the play. On the throw. Pass intended for McGee. McGee turned to the outside. The ball went over the other shoulder. It's incomplete. Of uh, winning game, when you have first and five, you ought to be able to stick it in the end zone with, what, a yard and three quarters per try. Tennessee's got 12 men out there. One's got to come off. <laughs> Good count. <laughs> Charles Wilson, uh, Keith Davis went in. Wilson didn't come out. Now Charles runs off just in time. And it's second down and goal from the five. Roll the quarterback out. Big fullback hits inside the five, close to the four, and a penalty flag. Looks like that uh, when Robinson, when Robinson went to hey, Wallen snap count. Yep, I think Wallen jumped. Yep. Waller jumped. When when you change the snap count on the goal line, the defense are all fired up and ready to shoot that gap get some penetration you go to a long count watch the bottom of your screen while the nose guard just jumps right there very clearly and then this ball is snapped by the center catching him off sides as Johnny Majors Keith Johnny Majors had, was the most decorated college player to ever become a successful head coach run up in the Heisman Trophy in 1956 to Paul Horning a very Offside defense. When Johnny Second worked, down. when Johnny worked for me, Keith, he was a perfectionist in everything that he did. Still is. UCLA's been flagged five times for 28 yards, and now Tennessee's looking at second down and goal. The ball at the Bruin three, and then their goal line offense. And all the blockers are in tight. Davis is hit behind the line of scrimmage. A great effort. I, I thought it was Jarecki, 99. It came flying in it there was, to get a Keith. piece of it. It was. Jarecki, Jarecki came clean inside the end and made the play and threw Tennessee back. Lost a yard. So it's third and goal from the four. If you're going to throw the ball in this area, you have to, most of the time, cross your receivers or roll your quarterback out. Some type of running play attack play. right here looks pretty pathetic. There's no socket, is it? No, not when you throw the ball this way. Robinson gets away. Now he's got a man wide open. Touchdown. Tim Hendricks, and here's 90,000 happy folks. Puts his name in the book. He makes that first catch pay off, doesn't he? Junior from DeSoto, Texas. The extra point try is good. Well, 
we're back where we started. Absolutely. Keith Robinson's athletic ability is what made this play. Up at the top of your screen, the quarterback, number three, Washington, looked like he had him for a loss. But Robinson's quickness gets him outside, gives him plenty of time. From the end zone, you'll we'll watch Washington, number three, is a great athlete right there, diving for him. But he couldn't pull Robinson down. Now he has plenty of time. Smith, number 98, had no chance. And Hendricks makes his first reception for a touchdown. The tight end fakes the block. Watch him go down on his knees like he's going to block. This is legal for him to block right there. Then he comes up. Linebackers had played the run all the way. Wide open for the touchdown. Hendricks, Rutledge, number 30, had no chance. So it's a 10-10 tie with three minutes and 35 seconds to play in the first half. Garibaldi and Green deep and Revez to kick off. Not a very good kick, but he's going to get out of it all right because it bounces along rather slowly and Gaston Green picks it up. And Green brings the ball across the 20 to about the 22. There UCLA will start. That's the halftime program for you. One of the great bands in America. Dr. Julian's prior to the Southland Band, University of Tennessee. Keep 90 some odd thousand people here every week. You know, it's the thing to do in North Tennessee is come see the volunteers play, and that band has a lot to do with it. Yes, they do. First down, Bruins from the 22. Far and green. In the backfield behind Matt Stevens. Matt rolls it out, loops his pass to the sideline. Good to Durrell. Durrell is brought down at about the 31, close to a first down, maybe a yard short. Here's Robinson talking to his coaches upstairs. Walt Harris is the offensive coordinator, coached in Illinois. On the Mike White. What a career this young man has had. Started just last year for the first time as a junior. Second and one. For the Bruins. Tennessee's not in the goal line short yardage defense. It got burned earlier. They pop it up the middle and get their first down. Out to about the 34 with Mel Farr carrying the ball. UCLA continues to mix up and be unpredictable on first down between a run and a pass, and that just a minute. About two and a half minutes to go first half. 10-10 tie. Stevens, roll out, has a protector, gets his pass off, has a man, and the catch is made. They're going to rule that a good one. It was Sherrard uh, sliding down and catching the low ball. Ball comes to the 39, second down four. Paco Craig and Willie Anderson are the wide receivers now. And give it a Gaston Green, Green to the 40. Good defense by the Tennessee team. If they are so inexperienced, they are gaining with every play, I suspect. Green now with that big 72-yard run has 100 yards on 10 carries and a touchdown. Pick it up on what you said about the Tennessee defense. Ken Donahue is a great coach, believes in fundamentals and intensity. Chase that football. Success he had in Alabama was phenomenal. Durrell and uh, Stewart come back now as the wide people, and Stevens will throw. Going deep with it for Stewart, and it's intercepted at the 30 by Chris White. The Tennessee is a catch-up football team. They scored a lot of touchdowns with less than two minutes on the clock last year. Robinson can put them in there and gets a good hot hand. Here, Sherrod just out jumped for the football. Chris White. Chris White came across the scene. I think that's wonderful. Chris White had not played anything but special teams before this year. Moved in the starting, starting in the lineup for the first time because Davis, the regular free safety, was injured. Made two or three great plays. And a senior, Keith, that's what's great for a youngster to stay out this long, get the chance to play, and finally it comes. Better take some more grease. Okay. Timeout called. Minute and 37 seconds to go in the first half. A 10-10 tie. Tennessee's ball. The Tennessee Volunteers have the ball first down at their own 29. They've got one timeout remaining. A minute and 37 seconds to play. 
Robinson back to throw. Got a man open. That is Tim McGee. How does he do it? He and Sherrard are incredible. They're always open. Robinson had to throw the ball before the final cut was made by McGee. He's trailing the wide receiver, and he breaks down. The ball's already on its way. Gives McGee a chance to catch it and get out of bounds. No way to cover that. Perfect execution. And it's a first down at midfield for the Volunteers. A minute 31 to go in the first half. Robinson back, mentally flagged down. Tony going for the bundle. Incomplete. Just barely. The receiver, Flink Scales, got a hand on it, but he couldn't catch it. And let's see about the flag. So Keith, while we're talking about the flag, Miller, I mean, uh, McGee was wide open again on the same play. He could have called another 15 yarder. Encroachment, I believe, on the Bruin. Change of the snap count, the rusher, jump the, the neutral zone. Might have been, might have been Batchkoff, the left tackle. There's your final score. Michigan defeats Notre Dame 20 to 12. Live ball foul. So, offside. Defense. First down. Yeah, UCLA was offside. So we will be next week at 3 Eastern time in Columbia, South Carolina with the Gamecocks and the Wolverines. That will be our game next week. That might be a pretty good ruckus. Oh, yes. Joe Morrison has done a magnificent job at South Carolina. Bo Schimbeckler knows how to coach. First down and five, and Robinson taking his time. Got him in. McGee again. He's got a first down. He's out of bounds at the UCLA 22. Keith, I, I don't want to get complicated, but the flood on the boundary is really hurting. Three receivers, one deep, and McGee breaking in behind the deep receiver. Well, we will see that uh, McGee is going to trail the wide receiver, number 23, Swanson. Now you see how wide open he is. The linebacker doesn't dare drop that deep. Four receptions, 105 yards. Right into the boundary. Seldom do you see that. They're moving in a hurry. You've got a minute 19 to go. We have started this possession with 137 to play in the first half. <laughs> That's moving the ball, Keith. He's out here on the bottom of the picture. Robinson has some time. Goes for McGee again. Incomplete. Too high. He was in front of Chucky Miller that time. As much time as Tony had, it looked like he wanted to say to, to McGee, go back inside. There's nobody there. <laughs> and there wasn't. There wasn't a white shirt anywhere. Well, we got a minute 13 left, Keith, and they brought the ball from what, about the 30-yard line to 29. The 29 to the 22 and it's second down and 10 in less than 30 seconds Oh, they can move it down 24 seconds they move it that far catch the ball step out of bounds got him that time robinson dropping back here in Tennessee, there hasn't been a dramatic mood change in Neyland Stadium. The crowd, after UCLA scored first in this ballgame, became deathly silent. It was not a factor. Even the players, the Tennessee players, could feel it, and they felt lucky to be in the ballgame, just down 10 points. But now they've come back. The momentum has changed. The scores have even changed the personalities of the players now. They believe they can win, and the crowd is a factor. And Keith, as you know, going into halftime, that Mr. Momentum is a big, big factor here in Neyland Stadium. He's fickle. <laughs> he's going to run it. Up the middle, Wilson. And he's short of the first down, but he has the football square in front of the goalposts at the 16-yard line. And in comes Carlos Rivera. And they've got to get the playoff without a timeout. They got the time. It's 30 yeah. seconds. Well, they don't have quite that much on the 25-second clock. 49-yarder for Rivera earlier. This is a 33-yarder. And it's good. So the Tennessee Volunteers with 16 seconds to go in the first half move out to a 13-10 lead over the UCLA Bruins. The Bruins jumped out 7-0 on a 72-yard run by Gaston Green. John Lee, a 39-yard field goal. It was 10-0 UCLA after a quarter. Revez hit a 49-yarder to make it 10-3. Hendricks ran it in, uh, caught a pass, rather, from Robinson to make it 10-10. And now Revez has kicked a 33-yard field goal 
And Tennessee is on top by three. Well, this is the eighth time these teams have played. They've had seven games. Excepting for one, when UCLA shut them out 13-0, they have all been like this. Up and down the field. The Tommy Prothero got some mad the first time they played in Memphis. He said he was never going to come back to his native state. But Bob Woodruff time. and uh, J.D. Morgan knew what they were doing when they scheduled this one. It's been a great series. They're 3-3-1 three, three and one in the seven games played. That was a tremendous drive. Poise and Robinson had done this three or four times last year. Pulled them out from behind the fourth quarter in a similar fashion. Just has that knack of scrambling and, and throwing. He's got a rifle arm and he's very active. The kickoff on the ground, bouncing around, trying to force an up man to take it, and they do. Number 15, Danny Thompson, the fullback, picks it up. Runs the ball up to about the 31 yard line. Now, let's have a look at UT Knoxville. Midfield, first down, UCLA. Four seconds to go, first half. Matt Stevens loads it up, lets it fly. It's intercepted. And brought back to the 25, that's Chris White's second interception of the first half. And at halftime, it's 13-10 Tennessee. Here's Tim Brandt with Coach John Major. All right, Johnny, coming into the game, I know one of your major concerns was your young defense, and yet they have swung to the football and done one whale of a job. Were you sandbagging us? Yeah, Chris said, no, not at all. We're, they're very new and very inexperienced. I still don't know, but I sure like the way they're fighting and hosting the football. That one big long run is the one big thing that's happened against them. Otherwise, I've been very proud of the way they've given an effort. Tony Robinson came up with a lot of big plays, but in my mind, the big play goes to you. Fourth and one, and you call a rollout. Big, big play, big gamble. If it works, it's good. If it doesn't, it doesn't. A lot of plays can work on fourth and one, and some of them don't. It's according to how it turns out. Your young kicker, Ruvez, came in and was two for two. Yes, he is. He's very, I'm very proud of him. He told me before, in pregame warm-ups, he was kicking 57 to 60 yards, and I didn't want to give him a, a, a long shot the first time in. We, we went for fourth and one down here and didn't make it. All right, good luck the second half, Johnny. Thank you. We'll need it. All right, so Tennessee leads at 13 to 10. We'll be back here to Neyland Stadium after this commercial message and a word from your local station. It's about the quarterback situation. I know you said you were going to have Nori ready. Uh, will Matt start again the second half? Yeah, Matt's going to start the second half, and we'll see how it goes. And thought he played real well in the first quarter, and then the second quarter our team didn't play as well on either side of the football. And we're going to have to see what happens here. Uh, Tennessee's a good team, and we're a three-point underdog, and we're behind by three points. So we'll see what happens. Defense made some mental errors, jumped off sides a little bit. I want to ask you about the Tennessee no-huddle offense. Did that cut down your blitz, and did it throw you out of, out of sync? No, we prepare for no huddle every week. Everybody runs no huddle offense in our league, so we prepare for it every week. Quite honestly, uh, uh, we're just we're just getting into the game, and we got to see how we do this half. Uh, we made some mistakes. We had a lot of penalties the first half. I didn't think uh, the first quarter, I thought we played real well. Second quarter, I didn't think we played as well, and hopefully we'll get back into it and get going. All right, Terry, good luck the second half. Second half. Quite frankly, Keith, a little, they looked a little bit flat in the second quarter, and it seemed to die here on the sidelines. I think he emphasized that in the locker room, and the players now are showing a little bit more emotion down here on the UCLA side. It was kind of interesting, Tim, that he brought his football team in here Thursday, and they had a very long workout out, at, out here yesterday, a lot of work on the kicking game in particular and kick coverage. And he was concerned about the crowd, and as you noted earlier, he had worked, uh, they worked some on that uh, no sound uh, offensive alignment, but sound uh, offensive alignment. But you're right, they did flatten out in the second quarter. Tennessee uh, got ahead of steam. We'll see what happens. The Volunteers will get the ball first here in the second half. The kick goes to Panuska, two yards deep in the end zone, and Pete's coming out with it. And he comes out to about the 18-yard line, maybe the 19, before they're bringing down. UCLA, after the second half, from the 19-yard line, goes to the fullback, Henderson, one yard. That's all. And Robinson comes out throwing, having trouble finding somebody right now, and then breaks it out of there. And he's got his first down as he slides on up to about the 32-33. So Robinson again gets him off the hook. There's your offensive alignment that started the ball game, and that's the same group in there right now. If your defense just does all they can do, they cover, they get a good rush, but the ability of Robinson breaks up the middle and makes the first down run demoralizing to your defense. Picked up 12 yards on the carry. 
13 to 10 Tennessee leads as we start the second half of play Keith Jackson Frank Royals and Tim Brandt with you and here's a long looping pass downfield that is caught by number 87 Clink Scales and he scores Keith did it look like you he pushed off a he little bit certainly did he put James Washington in the cheap seats and got away with it the official was right there and Look from this vantage point. He was anyway. trying to get back to the ball, and Washington was sort of blocking his way, and perhaps that entered into the judgment. But whatever, you'll see it on the replay. 68 yard touchdown, and Tennessee out. About to make it 20 to 10 if they can kick the extra point. The old momentum has turned, as we can see by the fans, the, the gate of the Tennessee team coming out of the huddle. Everything about them is picked up. Randy Sanders puts down the snap, and Revez kicks it through and makes it 20 to 10 Tennessee. So a shocker to start the third quarter. It was Gaston Green's 72-yard sprint for a touchdown. There was a shocker in the first quarter. Now let's have another look and uh, watch watch the power of Robinson's arm here. And right, Key. Plus he has to scramble, but he realizes he's got a man pretty much open. There you can see Clayscale <laughs> just pushed Washington. Completely uh, <laughs> all the way off, just as we saw earlier. And then Clinkscale, with his breakaway speed, goes in. Joey Clinkscale, number It's kind of like society. It's the point from the other point. <laughs> well, the ball is underthrown. Sometimes the receiver has the best chance on an underthrown takeoff pattern. But right here, Clinkscale takes his right arm, but then his left arm, and kind of pushes him a little bit. And then the turf shoes catch... Uh, the turf really more than the push, I believe. Uh, Through Washington to the ground, and Clay Scale takes it in. And Tennessee has scored now on four straight possessions. Keith, once again, the scrambling ability of Washington, uh, Robinson made the difference. He yep. had a rush. Only. Kickoff by Rivez goes to Bob Garibaldi. He hammers his way, and that's a fair word, out just across the 25. The Tennessee defensive unit beginning to assert itself. Robbie Scott, 275 at tackle. Red Bennett, 260 at middle guard. Mark Kovanek, 245 at tackle. Linebackers, Tyrone Robinson, 6'2", 215. Dale Jones, 6'2", 220. Kelly Ziegler, 6 feet, 220. And Darren Miller, 235 and the sophomore. So it's sophomore, sophomore, junior, junior amongst the linebackers. And junior side, two sophomores in the down position. UCLA from just over the 25. Take it into the middle with Mel Farr carrying, and he picks up about three yards. Gary McDaniel, 5'10", 165 at one corner. The other is Victor Peppers, 5'8", 155. He, too, is a sophomore. Tommy Sims, the strong safety, the only experience really back there in the secondary. And Chris White, who had two interceptions in the first half. Second down, call it seven. Stevens gives the ball to Gaston Green. And Green with a good, strong run, slipping off the corner. The double tight. First down, Matt Stevens is checking off. And goes back to Gaston Green, who slashes over the right side, gets another first down, and almost breaks out of there and goes home. Tommy Sims hadn't grabbed him by the shirt. I believe he might have run all the way. Here the halftime stats. You can see that Tennessee has gained and taken over the edge in first downs and uh, in total yardage. Turnovers is the big key. Last two passes that Stevens has thrown intercepted. They had three. The Tennessee's one. Yeah, but one of them was sort of that Hail yeah. Mary into the end. end That's right. It means it. Penalties have meant something to those people. Yes, kept, they have. Kept the Tennessee drive going. Marcus Greenwood is the fullback now. Has the ball. Marcus, 5'11", 210, a junior out of Bakersfield. And on the first down carry, gets about three, close to four yards out of it. UCLA's averaging close to seven and a half yards. Has played much better than I'm sure that they had anticipated with as much inexperience as they have. But they're tackling good, Keith. And it's green again. Now the UCLA ground game asserting itself as Gaston Green goes for another. Bruin first down, getting about seven yards on that carry. 
chewing them up with that ground game. Offensive line, UCLA is doing a great job blocking. Inside play again. Greenwood almost pops out of there. Number 54, Dale Jones, got a piece of him and knocked him off balance. But still, the big guy picks up. Oh, you see, he goes all the way down to the 25, so he's got eight yards. It's just an assault type of offense, running straight at him, pitching off and cutting back from the tailback. Offensive line deserving the credit, controlling that neutral zone. Second down, two. Changing the play. Green, hole left side, and gets the first down. Is a direct tribute to Bob Woodward because he's the man that started building here the quality of the programs, and of course, Bob Neyland and many, many others contributed to the legend of Tennessee football. But they fill it up mostly every week. Del Farr is back in at fullback. Green again, outside he goes. Boy, they're getting seven yards off that first down carry every time, Frank. Dale Jones, number 54, was outside linebacker is going to just chase good defensive players. When they see a chance, the ball carrier going the other way, don't let up. You never know when you're going to figure in the play. Take a good chase angle, and he does. 105 tackles last year. Still got seven yards out of it. He's got 148 yards, Green does, on 15 carries. Green again. And close to the first down. He's going to be down around the eight-yard line, and that should be a first down. First and goal for UCLA. 250 to 60 pounds are doing a great job of controlling the line. First and goal from the eight. UCLA's ball. Somebody moved, Keith, and when they blow it that early, it's most of the time it's the offense unless the defense made contact. Where it's first down and goal from there. Reston Green. Green trying to cut back, can't do it. There's a good defensive play. Who was that? Number 14 it was. Terry Brown. Cornerback on that side. Wouldn't let him outside. Came back and whacked him down. Keith, you mentioned the cornerback, number 14. Supporting on the sweep is the key to stop in that play. The quarterback has got to come up like a linebacker and turn it inside. He, put, he did perfect. Green has been the motor in this drive. Second down and goal. Not a pass. From the 11, and they give it to Green again, and he dives back to about the original line of scrimmage, where it'll be third down and goal. So Gaston Green, in this drive, has carried two, four, six, eight, Eight times for 58 yards. Keith, the coaches will tell you that when your team starts to drive and gets snapping the ball over 10 times, it sure increases the possibility of a mistake by the offense. What happened? UCLA got offside, a five-yard penalty. That's put him in the hole. That's Stevens, nine for 16, two interceptions. He's got the throw here. Third and goal from the Tennessee eight. Gets it away, and it's intercepted. Intercepted at the three-yard line by Victor Pepper. The rush on Stevens made him throw the ball poorly. Darnell is out in the open, but the ball is underthrown. Interception stops the drive. Score 20 to 10, Tennessee. And Tennessee. As they take over, the ball is at the three. Stevens' last three passes intercepted. One of them was just up for grabs. But that one was just didn't have anything on it. Peppers grabbed it. Now Tennessee has got to protect the ball. Let's see if they let Robinson have his way down here, if they run everything out of there as they go to the big fullback, Henderson. And Sam booms his way out to about the six-yard line. As Bo Jackson's totals for the day, impressive, and uh, Auburn had uh, game on their hands today, winning by 11. LSU had to come late to get that one. Big day for Rickersham and Hilliard. And Penn State beat Temple by two. 
It is second down and seven now with Jim Miller in at the fullback spot. And Robinson looks up to throw it. Nobody to throw it to. And Tony eats it back on the five. Boy, BYU beating up on the Huskies. And Oregon. Oregon might be the spoiler in that back ten this year. Third down and about eight. Pop it out of there with Charles Wilson. Wilson comes out to the 14, and he may have a first down. Boy, he had a hole behind that right guard, Bruin, and Hibbett, the center, and he's got a first down. When the defensive people get busy trying to rush the passer and contain someone like Robinson, they're subject to being blocked, and they got cross-blocked on that last play, and as G said, a big hole. And now at the 14. Robinson wants to throw. Does. Pass is thrown to the outside. Screen for Clink Scales. And Clink Scales will move the ball out for another first down to about the 26-yard line. When you got an arm like Robinson and you got receivers that can run and have to catch the ball, throw the ball close to the line of scrimmage. Give them a chance to pick up those blockers. Good, safe pattern. You see the two or three blockers out in front of him, and Clink Scales comes close to juking uh, one of the, I guess that was Miller, 37, and going all the way. Those are good calls, Keith. Right on the line of scrimmage. Those short passes keeping the ball. Robinson now 18 out of 25, 302 yards, two touchdowns. Come on, Jesus! Get away! Blitz. And it's Wilson tripped up at the line of scrimmage, number 95. Mark Whalen got a piece of him as he went by. He's a dark horse. Come on, Jesus! Had a bunch of players where they lose seven players, seven by, by academic ineligibility, but uh, they're going ahead uh, full speed. Second down, 11. Robinson down the middle, and a man wide open for the first down at the 41 yard line. Robert Swanson. Robinson really took a shot. He stayed in there knowing that he's going to take that shot, and he throws that ball. He waits to the very last minute, he gets hit hard. The ball is right on target. Swanson, junior college transfer from California. Came in last year. Had a good season as a pass receiver. Look how he jumps and cradles that ball. Let's see if he protects it. Goes down for the reception. 41-yard line, first down. No pitch out. Charles Wilson up to the 44, picked up three. They have a catch-up offense, but nothing like uh, what uh, Tennessee has with Robinson. It would be hard for them to score two touchdowns on them and not have Tennessee score anymore if Tennessee can put them on the board. Take three scores, wouldn't it? Second down, seven. Inside, Henderson carries. Well, they got to run a little bit, Keith. <laughs> now, Toomey, uh, number 40. <laughs> Six defensive backs in the lineup. It's third down and five for the ball. They are three out of nine on third down. For the Run it. And Keith Davis, 190-pound freshman from Nashville, booms for the first down to the UCLA 43. Once again, the defense wide now to get a good pass rush. That's the first thing on their mind. What are we going to do about Robinson? What are we going to do about Robinson? You better watch out for the run occasionally because the scouts up in the box have picked up what UCLA are doing on third down and have called twice a run off tackle and made the yardage. So he went from his own 46 down to the UCLA 43. That is the longest Tennessee run of the ball game. And the balls have it first down. Robinson on first down, gets some heat, gets it away, and it is incomplete. So he didn't want to get sacked, didn't want to waste it, so he threw it away. Now, Jim. Congratulations to Dallas Green, the Northwestern coach, who used to work for Bill Walsh at uh, Stanford. Chuck Howard reminds us who beat Northwestern last week. Duke. Second down and 10. 43. Robinson whips it. Good. 
And it'll be a first down at about the 29 to Jeff Smith. Keith, that was a tremendous throw. Did Robinson was just on his haunches. His arm is so strong. Right there, you see the receiver over to the right, hits him right on the numbers, right in the belt where it can't be intercepted. Took a careful throw, everything perfect. Craig Rutledge jumped up on top of him, rode him down. Uh, he's big buffalo. He <laughs> wasn't big enough to take him on head up. There's Robinson, number 10. Throw it again. Quickly to the sidelines for Swanson. And Swanson's inside the 20 and out of bounds at the 16. And that's another Tennessee first down. The Tennessee offense is picking this UCLA defense apart. And this defense at UCLA did a great job against Robbie Bosco last week as Brick Young. Got a Bruin hurt on the play. It is James Washington who had made the last tackle, and James comes up limping a little bit. The trainer out to check him, and I think he'll leave the ball game. Four Tennessee receivers now have four catches in the ball game. So uh, Tony's keeping everybody happy. That, that's well, not only that, but keeping them happy. But the main thing is Keith, he is identifying the defense and going to the open receiver. And he's getting, yeah, it won't be long. He'll be approaching 400 yards, if not over 400 yards. The way he's going, 21 out of 29. First down, UCLA 16. Contact in the middle. Contact made by Jim Waller on the center, Todd Kirk. And if it, in fact, is against Waller, that'll be the third time that middle guard's been flagged. Once again, Robinson very wisely to, to slow down the pass rush of the opponents. You use a long snap count one time and, a sh and then a very quick count the next, and the defense cannot get the jump. It gives the offensive lineman a chance to get set and protect the passer. UCLA's offside defense. UCLA has been flagged eight times for 43 yards. University of Tennessee, no flags. That's a big difference. <laughs> Mistakes are a facet of the game of football, but you try to eliminate those silly penalties of offside at least. It's a split crew, too. <laughs> On first and five, gives it away to Wilson. Big hole, and a penalty flag goes down as Wilson gets to the two-yard line, and look out, Tennessee may have just inherited its first flag. Well, that umpire threw that flag 15 feet in the air. <laughs> Makes you think he wanted to call it. <laughs> Old Tennessee. I guess. Yeah. That's too bad for quarterbacks in my time. The strong arm that Robinson had. Holding. Plus the quick 10 yard penalty. Offense. Repeat the down. When you. First down. Keith, when you combine the rifle arm and the quick feet and the vision that he has, he knows where the receivers are. He's gone to the right man virtually every time. The open receiver. That's a trait that you see very seldom in any quarterback. Washington is back in after a cramp. Keith Davis and Jim Miller, the setbacks. It is Davis. And this time he is caught behind the line of scrimmage by Tommy Taylor, inside linebacker. It's close to 16 yards. All just inside the 22, UCLA. Little lead pass thrown out to Smith, and Smith is caught from behind and run down by Chance Johnson, the outside linebacker there. He's a redshirt freshman from Compton. And so they'll be looking at third and long. Third down, 12. The tight end Smith just breaks in the flat, and the ball is right there, perfectly thrown by uh, Robinson. He doesn't back up. He just raises up right the line of scrimmage and hits him, and if Chance does not make the tackle, it's a touchdown. As UCLA was in the blitz, man-for-man -man coverage, it's a pretty heads-up play by that redshirt freshman. It certainly was. He, it, he made a great play to even make the tackle. He's one step behind. It's all you could do. <laughs> Run it. Davis gets inside the 15, down to about the 14. The ball's right in front of the goal post. And here comes Carlos Revis. It's a good play. Third and real long. You want to be sure and get something. You move the length of the field. Where to start? On the three-yard line, Keith? Yep. Moved all the way down. It's just hard, 
hard to keep it all the way, take it all the way in without the mistakes. The old law of percentages comes to, to haunt you before you can get it across the goal line. Carlos Rivera, a junior from Miami, transferred here from UT Chattanooga, has kicked the 49-yarder and the 33-yarder, and the third quarter time expires. We'll be back for the fourth quarter after this message and a word from our local station on the next UCLA offensive series. He started last week against BYU, played the first half. Right now, it is Tennessee trying to stretch its lead to 13 points as Rivez lines up and will try a 31-yard field goal. High snap, but the ball is put down by Sanders, and he's got it. So it's quite a debut for the younger of the Rivez brothers as he has kicked them good from 49, 33, and 31. Tennessee held the ball for the last eight minutes of the third quarter. To nothing in the first quarter, Tennessee has scored on five straight possessions. And we're in the fourth quarter. 14-5-6 to play, and it's 23-10 volunteers. And Rivez kicks off high all the way across the field where it is taken and out of bounds at the 21 by Danny Thompson. Danny made the catch, but momentum carried him out of bounds. As we look at the stats, Tennessee with 19 first downs. That's sensational. Look at the passing yards by Robinson. The total yards, 425. The big play turnovers by UCLA. And UCLA has not been using their great receivers. Sherrod has not caught a pass, I don't believe, since the first quarter. Stevens is in there at quarterback. That stays in. From the 21, first down. Far and Green behind him, and Stevens comes out throwing. Whips it down the middle, and the pass is almost intercepted. Almost by Chris White. That would have been his third of the ball game. Michigan, uh, second down and 10 for the Bruins from their 21. They really have shut the door on Sherrard. They run it with Green, and he dives to about the 27. Well, they had that long and a 13-point lead. That'll take a little wind out of your sail. Yes, it turns that momentum and all of that emotion right on Tennessee's side. Third and a long four. They go for Sherrard, and it's too high. Incomplete. It was deflected, Keith, by the lineman. Now Jim Lampley. But Ted Henderson, 30, 44, and 41 on his three previous kicks. And Tim McGee stands back at his 31, waiting for him. He's kicking into the wind. It's high and hanger. And coming up for a fair catch all the way at the 42-yard line is Tim McGee. 31-yard punt. Tennessee with a ball, 13-point lead in good field position. Still they are happy in Valtown. Ball Navy came in in full force and bright sunshine this morning. Tennessee River runs right down behind the stadium here. A lot of folks come by boat like they do at the University of Washington in Seattle. Wander over to the stadium. From the 42, Robinson rolling it left. Throws it downfield. Got a man open. McGee, and he's down at the 20. How he found McGee running to his left. Just unbelievable vision by Robinson. McGee goes down and then back out up the, the, the sideline and they just gets lost when Robinson scrambles. The distorted secondary has no idea, no clue where to cover the receivers and McGee is wide open. McGee has five catches for 142 yards, and I haven't seen a better quarterback performance in, in some time. How about Doug Flutie? That's, well, he reminds me a lot of that's such a true. dominant Robinson, player. Robinson's not having to come from behind in a terribly dramatic fashion. He was down 10 to nothing, but this is a pretty good performance. It is. Same thing that Doug did. He's to the open. corner! No, out of bounds. It was McGee again, and Tim caught the ball, but he was flying through space and landed out of bounds. Tony Robinson is from Leon High School in Tallahassee, which has produced a lot of great passes, including Jimmy Jordan, uh, who played at Florida State. He came to Tennessee, and Johnny Majors told me I wanted to redshirt him his freshman year, but he's afraid he quit. And he only <laughs> threw 15 passes in his first two years 
but 253 his junior year, and he's starting off in a fantastic, sensational fashion. Second down and 10 from the UCLA 20. Throwing again. Dives this time and does not get back to the line of scrimmage. They bring him down around the 21. It's Melvin Jackson made the tackle. You know, the Tennessee offense has been making the big plays all day. There's no question. That was expected. But the big credit today has to go to Ken Donahue, the defensive coach. He came in this year from Alabama, and what a job he's done. It was an unknown commodity. They didn't think they had the players that had the God-given talent. But these players all day have been playing and running to the football and being aggressive and making the big plays. You know, I, I know one time he said that half of playing defense is wanting to. These players down here on Tennessee today want to, and the defense and Ken Donahue have been the story. Robinson gives the ball to Wilson. Wilson is caught for a yard loss. But have to score twice and go for two on both occasions and make it just the top. Yeah, but how good is this Rivez now? He's kicked three in a row. He's taken the limelight away because of the opportunities from John Lee, the UCLA kicker. Well, this will be from 40 yards. Wins at his back. Wind will help him a little bit. He has kicked 49, 33, 31, and 40. And the Tennessee Volunteers have moved out to a 26 to 10 lead with 11.57 to play. Well, the 94,370 folks, about 370 of them are UCLA boosters. The other 94,000, I think, belong to Tennessee. And their team is sitting on a 16 point lead right now. It's a little surprising to me, frankly. It is to me, Keith. Also, Ron Zook is the de defensive backfield coach, and Johnny Majors tells me that he's one of the brightest young men he's ever had. His defensive backs, inexperienced, have just played great. Bad kick by uh, Carlos Rivez. It goes out of bounds up around the 11-yard line, so that'll back him up five yards. It certainly is. One of my favorite friends played for uh, Bud Grant for six years and thinks he's no finer person and, than Bud Grant and what a great coach he is. I guess you could only catch so many fish, huh? <laughs> yeah. And Minnesota beat the 49ers in that first game of Grant coming back. His return has come back from the last week. 28. This time Rivez gets it. All of it. Knocks it into the end zone a yard deep to Bob Garibaldi. And comes out to the 22. Again, Jim. Family, you ought to know something about that. Taking a lick. Daddy was heavyweight champion. All right. David Norrie is in for his first snap of the ball game on first down from about the 22. And David back to throw. Gets it away to the sideline. Sherrard makes the catch for a first down up around the 42-yard line. Nori, 6'5", 210, fifth-year senior from Portland, Oregon. Here's Tim. Keith, you mentioned it, Ken Norton. Oh, that's a painful injury. 41-yard line. First down, Nori gives the ball away. No, keeps it. Whips it sidearm to the sideline to the pass is completed. It's second down and four. Picked up six on that play. Run for it with Green. Gaston Green has that faculty for slashing for the extra yard and gets the first down. Here's Jim. At Provo, Utah. Some offensive coach. What yeah. a great record he's made at uh, Brigham Young. Kind of beat himself, too, against UCLA with five turnovers. Here's again Norris looping that ball to the sidelines to Durrell, and now he's moving the Bruins in a hurry. have a double coverage uh, on the receivers. Going big for it. And it is thrown too far incomplete. Pass is intended for number 81, Derek Connell. Defeated us in that great battle in Atlanta, six to nothing. Went on to have an undefeated season. All-American on everybody's team. Coached for me for a few years, and he was a perfectionist as a coach, just like he was as a player. Second and ten. For UCLA. Norris straight back. He gets some pressure on him. He gets it out here. The pass is caught by the fullback, Mel Farr. But Farr is just buried well short of the line of scrimmage. And here's Tim again. 
Doc, I have an update for you on Ken Norton, Jr. It is not a hip corner. I just talked to the doctors. They said he took a pretty big four of Tennessee. Well, and that's a loss of eight yards. One of the shortcomings of Norrie, the quarterback, he's not very agile. Doesn't have any foot speed to really dodge the rush. Third and about 18. Intercepted by Chris White, his third of the day. White's got some help coming back upfield. All the way to the 39. Keith, that ball wasn't even spiraling. Looked like he was <laughs> twirling through the air. Well, what happened? How about the substitute? White, who has three interceptions. Only plays he had made was on the special teams before today. So Tennessee owns the football first down at their own 39, leading 26 to 10. UCLA, unless they have some real thunder and lightning here, going to go one and one on opening successfully on the road. They have San Diego State at home September 21, and open the conference September 28 at Seattle against Washington. Tennessee gives the ball to Davis. Davis is thrown down right at the 40 for a yard pickup. Tennessee will take a week off now and uh, get ready for Auburn. The Tigers are coming into Knoxville on September 28th. That'll open the SEC play for those for those two teams. And the way it looks right now, that could be a whale of a football game. Woo. Well, that should be a great game with Bo Jackson on one side, who's a potential Heisman Trophy winner, and who can discount the performance of Tony Robinson today. If he keep this up, he's got to be a Heisman Trophy. Candidate. We can have one of the most exciting games. We can do that with oh boy. Start lobby. <laughs> Break it up the middle. The fullback Jim Miller, a junior from Nashville, brought down by Terry Toomey. First down falls. The ball comes down. Let's see where they've marked it. Down at the 47 of UCLA. Here's Tim. All right, Keith, we were talking about that defensive spirit down here on the Tennessee sideline. One of the truly great stories has to be the senior defensive back, Chris White. In his first start, three interceptions, and of course it was the injury to Charles Davis that allowed him to get that start today. He wasn't even sure prior to the game if he would start, but he comes in, three interceptions, the whole team now rallying behind him. You can see him gathering as the coach talks to the defense. He indeed has been some incentive for this rubber band defense that has stretched, but will not let him score and break it. Yeah, got to have a Walter Mitty every Saturday. <laughs> Well, it's great that it happened to a senior uh, who had just played on the special teams and, and not really had a significant role in his, in his team, but today he's the hero, along with many other Tennessee players. Well, you know, the marvelous thing about college football is a day like this, now whether Chris White ever plays a day after he leaves Tennessee, he has had a day to remember, oh. and people are going to remember Chris White, and it'll be something that'll last him the rest of his life. That's the wonder and marvel of college football to me. On the ground, pounding away with it is Charles Wilson, and Tennessee now would love to run the ball as much as possible to keep that clock moving. And stay in the huddle as long as they possibly can without getting a penalty, but back to Charles White, Keith. Johnny Majors does what most of us do, I'm sure, is give the team ball to some player who had a significant role in the victory. And I would just wager that Charles White will Chris get White. that, I mean, Chris White will get that ball autographed by all of his teammates who put in his den for the rest of his life. Third down and six and a half. Tony Robinson shoots it over the middle and it is short of the first down and making the catch is Charles Wilson, but making the hit is James Washington. Well, Smokey, the uh, blue tick hound mascot, satisfied with the way things are, so he's having a nap. It is fourth down, two yards plus, and they're going for it. Oh, they just go try to draw them all, team. That plenty of them. yard penalty and then punt the ball the academic to five yards yeah 
They sat there for a good 30 seconds and eyeballed each other and nobody moved. Uh, now in comes Garmin to do the punting. Garmin has punted only one time today. One time. Well, this is the first possession that Tennessee hasn't scored on in six. Six consecutive unanswered scores by the Tennessee Volunteers. A little bit different style of play than what we used to see at Tennessee with the old single wing. Gifford Urban is deep for UCLA. Block is on, Keith. Going after Tennis. Best chance. Gets it out. And oh, knocked down. Far to the goal line. How about that? When everything's going right, you just don't worry about it. Just ride the roll, and they have killed the ball inside the five. Down, literally. Well, they're going to mark it out a little bit from the goal line by out to about the three. The UCLA safety was, that? was somebody really hustled down there to get that ball out of the end zone, keep it from going in. Then about three of them, yeah, 25 is going to really, and he's close to the goal line there. The first man, I couldn't see his number. Well, UCLA is 97 yards away. Tennessee goal line trailing by 16 points 638 to play and uh, David Norrie is in at quarterback throws to Durrell and misses Carl through behind him South Carolina Michigan from Columbia we'll have about 75,000 folks in Columbia next week and they are wound up about their football team down there now I guess Mike Hold is a starting quarterback this year for South Carolina, yeah. and he's still rotating. Is he? Is he? Uh -huh. With Mitchell and, Mo and, and Holt. Joe Morrison, uh, he's turned that program around as fast and quick as anybody has been in college football. Second down and ten from their three. Norrie out of his end zone. Goes down the middle with it, and the pass is too high. Gerard got a hand on it, could not haul it down. Again, Jim. 94,000 folks on it. Norrie lets it go. Sherrard in a foot race and a great catch by Sherrard. He had two people there and he pulled the ball down. Chris White and Victor Peppers were with him, but he just went higher. Sherrard is such a great receiver. Concentration. He just runs along at the last minute at the proper time. He goes up and catches the ball. Peppers, number eight, just couldn't stay with him. And White is coming across, number seven. But Sherrod had that body control and came down with it. Five catches for Mike, 95 yards. First down, UCLA out of the shotgun now. Snap from their own 48. Pass thrown to the sidelines and incomplete the penalty flag. And you may have interference called here. Looks down in the end zone. Touchdown for UCLA to Al Wilson. The team is about 40%. Is trying, not successively. He's open. Good. He's got it. Busted defense by the Tennessee. Secondary. They yes. went to sleep on that corner, and Jeff Nowinski, the tight end, pulls in the two point conversion. 46. I'd kick it I'd down the You try to kick it over the end zone, start him on the 20. Make the deep pitch. They kick it high. It's not too deep. Goes back to McGee at the six. He what didn't that? Well, Keith, what he did, he afraid he might fumble the ball, and so he just puts his knee on the ground, no chance to fumble. I don't know why that his reaction was that way, but he said to himself, if I get hit, I may fumble. I don't want to do that. So he put his knee on the ground, killed the ball before the contact. At the 13-yard line, though. Well, we used to do that on the last 15 seconds. We've intercepted a pass. We'd say, don't run with that ball late in the game. Put your knee on the ground, then run with it. Yeah, well, but you got 442 yeah. to play in this one. McGee's a good runner, and uh, I, I'm a little surprised that he did that. Robinson comes up 24 out of 33 for 381 yards, his career high, and two touchdowns. And he's got it, and he's going to throw it. No, he's not. He's going to run it. And he dives across the 20 and gets out to the 21. Well, Robinson has broke containment of the outside 
defense of UCLA virtually every time, Keith. That's amazing that he can just get outside of that containment and then run a throw, whichever he chooses. There is numbers. 72% completion. Dilly the uh, three. ball is actually almost touching the 20. It's just over the 20. So it's second down and close to three. They hand it off to Wilson. No, not Wilson. David. We've got Miller in there at fullback. They give it to Wilson, and Wilson's got the first down. Biggest play of the, of the ball game so far right there. It was a big play to keep the ball away from UCLA. Good Watch block. this hit here. Watch the tackle now at the end of this tackle by Washington. Washington is from that breed that they say like Easley and Rogers. You're not a shiver? That's a great tackle. He's tough. 119 stops last year as a freshman. Wasn't what I asked you. Oh. Wasn't that a shiver? A shiver with Threw a that right upside the head. That's that could be a penalty. You could not tackle with your arm. It was the elbow Good in the ear that was the bother. Ball is tipped in the air, and Robinson comes over and knocks it down. That thing could have been picked off. In fact, there was a UCLA man in the neighborhood. Melvin Jackson tipped it up, and Tony Robinson, realizing it might have been intercepted, knocked the thing on the ground. Well, that's the presence of mind of a senior. Young man who's been back there in that pocket a lot of times. The receiver's open, but the defender knocks it up in the air. Now, watch this. This is something. Yeah, but Batchkoff is going right for it. He's see? dunking it. He's dunking it right there. <laughs> he didn't want it. I'd fumble if he'd caught it. Did well, the smart that, thing. He had a 245-pounder with red eyes coming at him, too. <laughs> he would have taken some punishment. That does stop the clock. Incomplete pass stops the clock. Something that Tennessee doesn't really want to do if they keep from it. Second down and ten. Bill changes the play at the line. Numbers game. Davis. Good blocking on the left side, but good reaction by the UCLA backers and Melvin Jackson and James Washington come up to get him in a hurry. Washington came close to stripping the ball right out of his hands. He went for the ball, which is what you supposed to do. Bootleg it out of there. Nope. They give it off to the tailback, Wilson. And Wilson is owned by UCLA. Joel Farmer snaps it. Good snap. Kick is away. Urban at the 25. Down at the 27. Waving his arms and come on, make some noise. 94, almost 95,000 of you. And out of the shotgun, Dave Norrie drops the throw. It. Dumps it off to Gaston Green out of the backfield, and he can't get it down. Ball was thrown behind him a little bit. I don't know if Tony Robinson will see the ball anymore today, but if he does, he's got a chance to beat Bobby Scott's record. Set back in 1970, Robinson has 381 yards total offense today he is just four short of Bobby Scott's record Dewey Warren was the quarterback for Tennessee in that 37 and 34 game he had a fantastic game similar to what Tommy Tony Robinson did today Swamp Rats an assistant coach up at 20 <laughs> this time uh, the ball is delivered to Gaston Green where he can catch it and he does catch it for about eight yards maybe seven they give it to Freeman is knocked out of bounds close. The chains are all the way across the field. Norley going under center, rolls this one out, gets the pressure, sack him. He throws the ball, the pass is caught. How about that? The big guy from Portland, Oregon was on his way down and saw a man and threw the ball to Mike Sherrard and Sherrard made the catch close to a first down. Dale Jones had a hold of him and had him on the way down. Look at this. The quarterbacks are taught to throw that ball if they can, anything to avoid the loss. That's stuff they work on every day. But look at that one-handed catch by Sherrod. He makes a nice gain out of it. They're going to bring the chains in. They want to know exactly how far they have to go. They do not have the first down, but they want to know precisely how much they need. With one timeout left, 
they don't really need to be running the football at all. Well, he needs what a half a yard, half a yard. This is this is the college football scoreboard coming up next. This is just what UCLA did last week, coming from behind in the last two minutes to win the ball game. So they believe they can do it. There's a confidence level out there. You can see it. Second down, half a yard. They've got Green and Greenwood in the lineup. They're going to waste a lot of time on the run here. If they run it, they're popping big, and they're going to run it. Well, they're going to run it pretty well. Get out of bounds. That's Justin Green blows it over the left side and goes down to about the Tennessee 41 and gets out of bounds, killing the clock with 101 to play. Last week, it looked like it was impossible for UCLA to beat Brigham Young. They were trailing with two minutes to play. Got the ball on the old 18-yard line. They scored and won the game. Well, they played a 17-17 tie here one time in Knoxville. Because I, I did it. I remember. Tennessee has not lined up properly. They have a hard time getting adjusted. Now they good shape. Norris still got it. He missed the handoff, Steve. And he's going to go out of bounds. Knocked out back around the 46. He had an off-tackle play called and just couldn't get to uh, Green on the handoff and had to keep it. I don't know how the blocking was. I didn't see, but there's the score. Eight points from a tie and the time, 54 seconds. Loss on the play from the 41 back to the 46. Back to the shotgun. Second down and 15. Across the field, Sherrard got it out of bounds. That and was a first down at the 27 of Tennessee. There's an old saying, threading the needle. And that's exactly what happens here. As Gary throws the ball right in between the defenders, in front of one, behind the other, and inside of the third man. Three of them around Sherrard, they couldn't get to it. Sherrard now seven catches, 124 yards. 49 seconds to play. First down. Just inside the 27. Here's the blitz. Give it a green. To the 25. Two yards. Victor Peppers, the right corner, came up to support on that side and did the job. And you've got timeout called by UCLA. That is their last one. You have 43 seconds to play. Lots of hustle, that's our repeat. That's why he's eating what the big boys eat. He loved his Wheaties since he was small. Now dig in, big boy, have a ball. Classic hit of crunchy wheat. Pure and simple, not too sweet. Dive right into those Wheaties feet. Now go tell your mama what the big boys eat. It's a big step, Tom. I'm still gonna go to college, Dad, but after the Army. I thought you wanted to be an electrical engineer. I'll be learning about electronics, and I can qualify for the new GI Bill and new Army College Fund. If you qualify, the new GI Bill and new Army College Fund can help you save over $25,000 for tuition. So you're gonna be a soldier? Yeah. Be all that you can be. And an engineer. Find your future. Be a good one. In the Army. Uh, that picture tells you everything you need to know. Except it is second down and eight. And the home crowd is getting all over UCLA here, making it as tough as possible. Now they've forced Norrie into his hand signal. And out of the shotgun. Goes for the corner. Touchdown! Sherrard! Willie Anderson! Willie Anderson, 83, made the catch. Can you believe it? with 37 seconds to play. And here comes your two-point play for a tie. Last time, Tennessee busted their defense, and it was an easy, easy, successful pass for the two points. Willie Anderson, 83. 
Comes up with the biggest catch of his life in the corner of the end zone over Victor Peppers. And here comes the two-point play for the tie. They give it to Gaston Green. He's in there. They run the ball and tie it up at 26, 26. There's not much you can say except give tremendous credit to that UCLA team for not giving up, putting forth the effort. They did it last week, and they've done it again. Here's the touchdown. 